And, and, um, and I had always, um, operated like trying to circumvent the real economy in, in my own older words that, um, is the same as, as the transactional to relational pivot. Um, and, and what I did when I got here was drive down all of the side streets um, and, and go to everyone's garage sale. Everyone was clearing out their houses, so there was tons of that um, to get to know people And, and to get to know the, the area geographically. And I found lots of things driving around, like seed exchanges and little, little uh, free libraries and parks and open farm stands and, and berry areas where people would open up like their blueberries for public and flower stands and stuff, um, like buy no nation or just take one. And I put all of those things together years ago um to tell people about um but it was also really helpful because now i know when people are talking about a neighborhood where to place it it's pretty spread out here and it did used to be mostly farmland um and for that it's still quite spread out um another thing that worked for me during covid because churches have memberships and they're set and they're accessible. Like you get the whole list, the whole population. Um, and this was partly to deal with what COVID was doing as far as furthering people's isolation was um, search for, for people's needs. I, I divided up congregations, and this is not um, depending on the denomination, it was just a project. And most of the time I was met with, with open arms for getting this together for different churches, but to divide up the people, find out what they needed, find out the best way to get a hold of them, um, which of their needs weren't being met, what they could contribute um, for other people who weren't, and what I, I would tell people is that we're trying to make up for that time that you have when, when you run into each other in the hallways, you don't have a chance to say, um, my sister's having a hard time anymore. Uh, or, or we got a new puppy, like whatever it is you want to share or could use help with, we got to figure out a way to keep track of you and, and that figured out. And so similarly to people offering what they have, to um, provide, I do home health care. So I do that for people who can't afford it with elderly or recovering from surgery. And other people would offer up like yard work or pet sitting um, or help with a resume. And, and it was kind of amazing to see when you were calling to ask what people might need, what they were also able to contribute and then match. Match the people with the needs to the people with the resources and keep mainly lines of communication open um, which kind of brings me to, to something I've learned very much, um, about living where I do. And, and that's that communication seems to be what's lacking most. Um, a lot of the, the community mapping should expose, um, shortcomings and resources and, um, and also solutions and things that are there to fill, fill those gaps um and 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 we have an elderly population it's largely agricultural um there's a tourist um influx that that's here all summer there's lots of money coming into the rural areas from seattle that creates some conflicts there's a strong tribal presence and um and it's a little bit interesting where I moved from, I can see it from across the water, was an island with a lot of youth, a lot of art, and a Navy base. And um, and the same tourist situation. But um, let's see. I, I've...
found really that what's lacking for me is communication, but I'm looking to see what I was going to say. Um, I'm putting together a resource database, much like the one on the website for Code Pink. Um, and I go around and when I interact with people, I'm always paying attention to see what they have to say about what's going on to put into that. So we have places and programs and um, resources and an awareness that I'm hoping to make accessible in like a little print directory when it's close enough to done. Most of these things surprise me when I learn about them. We have um, a pet rescue group. There, there seem not to be any way to have your pet found and returned to you should it have gone missing. And um, they're set up and are getting a new ambulance so that they can keep your pet safe while they're rescuing it. And um, that, that, that's one interesting thing. We have a hospice medical closet that a lot of people somehow don't know about where you can borrow your wheelchairs or even like beds for um for seniors or people recovering from surgery or um even we recently this week found out that they're willing to lend us like 20 wheelchairs to get a bunch of people down to a protest in Seattle. These are all um little just little bits and pieces of things I, I've been learning um, now with a little more direction. Um, since COVID, one thing that I've found really helped me learn about where I live is to take up some kind of like small non-controversial cause. Um, like we're trying to set up a pet emergency clinic that's aimed to be not profit and, and we don't have any emergency pet services anywhere in the area. So that's something that I can um, print something out about and walk into every business without having to wonder about there being a controversy and, and, and setting foot in those doors and talking to the business owners and seeing the people there teaches me a good deal um, about who I live with. And, um, and and what they have going on, which then goes back into my my catalog, of course. Um, let's see. There, we we've I've learned a lot from social workers when when I'm trying to figure out um, if there is or is not a resource or a solution. A social worker. Lots of the churches are pretty gossipy, and information can count be counted on with a couple in particular out here to get around fast, which is good if there's um, going to be a power outage or or if, if somebody needs like a place to stay for an emergency. There are also a few people who are incredibly well informed about history here and, and have written books and stuff who can answer questions. History is, is part of the culture. Um, it's always also interesting to check um, the pulse with the tribes at the same time as, as anything else that's going on. Um, what's the story you've heard and check that story against, against what you'll hear from our First Nations people or what do they have to say about maybe an irrigation project going on? Um, or what do they have to say about healthcare out here, we also had um, a real hard hit from the opioid crisis. And for that, um, the tribes have um, stepped up. And and this is the first place I've ever lived where I would say there's a like visible recovery community. And um, uh, and there's a lot of behavioral health in the education system. and. I don't, the college only offers two bachelor's programs. One is behavioral health. And it seems like it's it's kind of so big here that there, there's really little room for stigma. It's, um, and, and those recovery communities do a lot of self-sustaining. And, um, and it's interesting. They're among the stronger microcosm out here. And... What, what I've been doing with communication is, is um, try to put together 
meeting groups, like little household parties where, where the topics are head, hearts, and hands. Um, what do you know? What what drives you? What's what's your interest? And um, what is it that you're able to do? Um, this helps with just getting to know you and is also good for um, organizing projects. We've got a May Day thing coming up. And uh, it's a bunch of pretty disorganized people. And the first step will be running through those three things. Um, because most of us don't even know each other. There's also something that I've done in the past um, called a story census, where I will pick a topic and and um, hopefully something that's exciting to people. This isn't especially inclusive at being Christmassy, but I asked once um, just about anyone from the most diverse aspects of like our little community that I could find and think of to write a story about um, a Christmas tree that had been memorable. And, and we bound that and it was just kind of interesting because you'd see names that you recognized and, um, and it, it did a lot to demonstrate the differences in culture and, and um, economic standing and, and such. Um, so I'm I'm trying to think about something to do with that and also to set up a favor trade board. Uh, a few of our coffee shops, we have um, some similar things in place, but um, again, with the moving away from the economy with the fashion. So um, to stimulate community and people talking, I suppose that's notes, guys. I also subject things to a gossip test um, and here the system doesn't work like it did where, where I'm accustomed to living in a couple other small towns, word would get back to me pretty quickly, like within a week. And here I've been able to tell about 30 people, um, three things that changed in our community. We lost our pride organization. Um, Meals on Wheels disappeared in October. And I did say that the pet rescue group hasn't new ambulance and it was interesting oh, wow. because what circulated was the the pet rescue group has an ambulance that went everywhere and um meals on wheels and our pride organization nobody had heard anything about so what i'm mostly doing for myself right now is focus on where are the breaks in communication and how to get things a little bit more connected it seems like there's a lot going on and very little um getting together on any certain point. Um, but when you set out to map your community, I think that it's impossible not to be inspired and, and surprised by what you'll find and see people are interested in and in, in putting their energy into. And then to make connections between those resources. And um, and the relationships between causes and people and and, um, and their assets and hopefully use that for for whatever project you're looking to see through if nothing else just for knowing better your world that you live in your sphere of mm -hmm. influence <laughs> Well, and your and we know your sphere of concern is huge, but your sphere of influence, you just what you added to that, Macy, is how you weave it into something strong and how you weave it into something resilient and beautiful and caring and life filled and relational. Um, so you just gave that sphere of influence a whole new image for this community of um, and also that it's, you know, it gives back. Um, so Macy, that was so beautiful. I just like, can everybody just like, oh, yay. Cool, Macy. Good. Like amazing sharing and, um, bringing us into what it is on so many levels. Thank you so much. So I hope I remember what you said once about the basket that holds everything together. And when I was looking for my peace economy, that's the criteria. That's how I judge it. Is it part of that basket? And um, 
And it's pretty simple, yes or no. <laughs> Funny you don't know. how simple it all is, right? <laughs> when we get out of the complicated. I will also say when I moved here uh, during COVID, I thought I just had to wait for COVID to, to go away and the, the town would expose itself and stop being weird and impenetrable and confusing. And it didn't. It didn't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not on its own. No, Thank you. Not <laughs> so um, I'd like to move everybody into your groups now um, and uh, to share um, anything you want to say about mapping uh, or, um, you know, like if you're worried about it, some ideas about it, if there's anybody that's mapped their community to share that. So I. Um, Let's see, I think to get three in, I'm going to do groups of five for 15, uh, um, groups of three for 15 minutes. So you really have a chance to talk and connect. Remember, you can talk about your pivots or, but here's your chance to share what's been happening for the last two weeks and what you want to do with mapping or if anyone else has an experience of mapping that they want to share. So we'll see you back in 15. Thank you. You could kindly mute yourself as you come back. You're probably off mute. <laughs> oh, oh. Stuck in room one and room two is still on its way back. You can be the last one. <laughs> so much to talk about. <laughs> We're back to in there. All right. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. Sorry, Zach, that you got such a short amount of time. Um, and so maybe we can do a little recap if anybody heard anything they want to share. Um, <laughs> please, please raise your hand and we can do a little share back from the small groups to the big groups. Anything learned that you feel the whole group might want to know? Anything that moved you and your group that you want to share? Marjorie. I, I mean, it's very helpful to talk with other people about the things that they find to do that that they feel make, make a difference in other people's lives. And um, yeah, so I found that, I found that very interesting, many different Thank you. Marjorie, that's such a great reminder that, you know, we're, um, we're here <laughs> to inspire each other. You know, it's kind of like when you look at a rose and you're inspired, we're all flowers in the, in the field. And, you know, the sharing is so important. And I think it goes back to what Macy said about communication. And, and we're like learning to communicate again and learning to share from like the authentic experience is so important because there's so much information that's not rooted or grounded that's about nothing instead of like being able to share from our hearts and our experience and our wisdom and i thought that was so cool that that was the thread that ran through what macy was sharing david um am i audible you are audible. Well, guess who makes the bunker bu bunker buster bombs Israel is using? What company is it? Are you do you live close to that company? I mean, the, the any the poet William Stafford said every war has two losers. And it gets complex because if Hamas is hiding in hospitals or using innocent civilians as human shields, um, how are they defeated? You know, you could put yourself in Netanyahu's brain. And certainly we want a ceasefire and some negotiations, mainly from the, uh, the uh, fellow Arab states who don't do anything. Well, but so David, I think the thing you're speaking to are the lies that are, you know, that create war because there are no human shields. There was no one hiding under the hospital. 
There were no rapes. There were no beheaded babies. So, you know, it's also one of the reasons to be rooted in community so that we don't get used by the lies to do really violent things. Um, look, six million people are dead because of the response to 9-11, the war on Afghanistan and Iraq driven by lies. Um, nobody in Iraq had anything to do with 9-11. So, you know, what we know about wars is they're started by lies. Um, and they can be ended by truce, uh, is one of the things we know it could pink. But um, we do have a map, um, by the way, of where all those weapons are made that are bombing Gaza. And I will give it to Emily, or she can get it from the team, and we will make sure to include that in the response email to this meeting, just in case there's one near you. That's a, a good place to start on your map of what violence happens in your community. We actually... Um, are working on that in Los Angeles. And, you know, it's like, how do we approach this? We all, we've always had a divest from war campaign, but right now we're going and we're just gonna be outside the place when people are coming to work and ask them what it feels like to be creating the weapons that are creating a genocide, you know? And I'm sure they're not reflecting on that themselves. Uh, so starting with that communication thing there, Macy. Dominique. <laughs> Yes, uh, I was in a little group with two lovely people, and uh, one of them is Team Reese. And that's a story to, to tell people. It was so lovely. This man who has had a couple of careers and got involved, and I think through the, the inspired by your work, Jody and Emily and Code Pink to become an urban agriculture, uh, do urban agriculture. And I asked him, you know, have you ever done agriculture before? He said, no, I've done lots of mistakes. It was, and he said, well, now, you know, he's working with people who know a little more, but it was such a lovely story. I had oh. to share that. Oh, thank you, Dominique. Yes, Tim is a, is a gem, a gem of a human, as are all of you. But yes, I think the important thing about that story is that, you know, it's just set off into an adventure. Yeah. And, it's, you know, it's inspiring. It's so full of, mis you know, magic. And yes, let's go learn. Yeah, absolutely. And I told him, I, I said, you, you're probably much happier than your previous careers. And he said, absolutely. Yeah. And and before I end, I must say I have a quote in the chat for Joy, who, who may be here. I don't know if it's Joy the Poet, but Joy the Poet, I have had this quote in my little book for you, hoping I would be in a group for you, but now you are in, in the chat. Because the first time you said you were frustrated because you were just a poet as well as a, a school teacher. But I came across this quote. Poetry is always in conversation with public life. So that's for you, my dear. <laughs> Thank you. I love that the conversation moves between weeks and sharings. This is the yeah, I, <laughs> uh, I, I can see Joy smiling. So thank you. Yeah, good story. I'm happy. That was that was a beautiful sharing. Yay. <laughs> All right, well, um, Emily's gonna give us our assignment for the next couple of weeks. Thank you all for being here, love you. And all that you're exploring, It's isn't exploring fun? Isn't like pivoting into this new world fun? Um, all right, what are we gonna do this week, Emily? So uh, over the next two weeks, um, the invitation is to make a map. And Jody gave us so many mm -hmm. great examples of the types of map, mapping ourselves, mapping, where we've been, um, where we've lived, where we put our energy and love into, um, how we spend our time. Um, so, so many options. Uh, choose something that speaks to you. If you are um, looking for more support um, on page 117 in the local peace economy workbook, and um, that link will be, um, if you don't already have access to it, those links will be shared out as well in the follow-up email. Um, but there's on page 117, there's a whole section um, on mapping. So there's some great reflection questions in there that can get you started and see where it takes you. Um, I'll also put uh, the link for the uh, the mapping um, that we've been doing um, that's on the Local Peace Economy Code Pink website in the chat that's in there now, as well as the link to register for our next call, which will be on April 10th. So we really hope to see you there and look forward to um, yeah, seeing 
seeing where your maps take you. If you feel so inspired to um, take up, if you map something and want to share it, please take a picture and send it to, um, I'll put that in the chat, peace economy at codepink.org. Um, or you can share it with this uh, nectar in the next call. Um, we'd love to see it and and share it with each other. And if anybody's in the Bay Area, uh, Emily's hosting a little gathering on Saturday. Reach out to her. She can tell you more. Emily and Cynthia and Krista um, in Berkeley uh, at Pioneers. So until two weeks, much love. Spread the peace. Spread the love. See Nourish life. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.